evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Evening. Welcome. Welcome to week three of Bible study. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Come on in the room. So excited to see all of you and to be celebrating this week with you. Don't know if you have plans for Resurrection Sunday, but I tell you, you live long enough and you start not just looking for the Resurrection Sunday to show up, but you're like, what am I going to be doing Holy Week? Like, mm -hmm. what, what am I going to be doing to, to continue to walk out my faith and to continue to learn and study and, and just be where God is? So we delight in you being here. We feel blessed that you are here. And while some of our other sisters are probably going through traffic and getting kids fed and doing all the things, we're going to start by praying for them and for us so that we can get this third week started. Yes. Reverend Dr. Pastor <laughs> Right. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey there. You know, I was just thinking, you guys, um, uh, when I was looking at the screen, it says, welcome to Bible study. And um, I see the cute little tip draw on there. Mm -hmm. And I have to just say, um, several people have asked us, you know, how do we support you? How do we bless you? And um, I know for me, and I know the heart of Nicole and Crystal, we felt like squirmish about that. Mm -hmm. Like, we were, because we were like, this is a free. Like, what do we do? What does that mean? Oh, what does that even mean? <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, I've been doing ministry, y'all, for decades. So I was like, and I often hear people ask me that and say that to me. And I've always. What's your cash out? Uh, yeah, yeah, which again, you know, how can I bless you? And so we're really uh, stepping out and being stretched yeah. uh, because other people have asked us. And so, yeah. you know, what do you what do you say? No, no. You know, and when you say no, what's that about? Is that about your tradition? Is that for me about pride? Is that about me being familiar and I just do ministry and Nicole, Dr. Nicole just does ministry and Crystal just does ministry because that's what we do. And so just know that's the kind of a stretch for us. And we 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 we're just trying to figure it out. Like we had to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, it may yeah, not right. even work. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, what was funny was I, you know, when uh one person approached me, I was like, oh, oh. and she been saying that to me since my last Bible study. And I guess she was like, Look, look at here. Look at here. I've been talking to you about this forever. You know? <laughs> and um, and so um, you know, uh look at it, look at figure it out. You know, somebody right. said it works, you know. And so um just know that sincerely that is a stretch for us. We're stepping into new waters, it's unfamiliar. Um, but um I don't want anything, uh, and I'm sure Dr. Nicole and Crystal doesn't want anything to hinder or block. And so it's no pressure. It's no, you know, it's, you know, don't feel bad if you can't, can't do it. It's nothing, nothing like that. Amen. We are just answering your call and trying, for me, trying to um, think differently because, you know, usually I'd be like, no, 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 uh-uh, we're not doing it. <laughs> you know? And so, um, you know, maybe this is, it. I, 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 you guys, I'm in a so new season that um, I don't want to be like, God is like, I'm trying to help you and you just drowning in the water. You know? And so, um, and so I'm just grateful that everyone is here tonight and I just know God's going to bless us. So I'll yes. pass the ball back to my co-leaders here. Listen, it's a true joke for real. Cause we like. <laughs> How do you do it? Right, right. We were like, okay, we cash were. App, don't trust cash app. Then right. We were like, what about PayPal? Right, right. We were all like, oh, I don't know I how. Don't, I don't even I, know let me how tell you. Let me mm -hmm. tell you. So new. So new. So oh, we, we're here and, you know, it's it's all good. We're going to learn. We're going to learn how to do all the things. Yeah. Uh, but But this is just an exciting 
time. Um, man, this book of Joshua. You know what I love about the Bible? Let me just say. We didn't that. pray. I'm sorry. We did not pray. Oh, we didn't pray? We didn't pray yet? No. Right, one, two, three, prayer uh, position. No. <laughs> but, but listen, here's the thing, y'all. I have been in prayer and worship all day. That is that is unusual, okay? So don't nobody be like, oh, you're not supposed to tell nobody. That's very unusual. I found something called soaking uh, worship. I'll probably share it at some point. I talked about it yesterday and I have been praying and praising all day. So literally in my mind, we had already prayed. No. Because it's been one of those days. So I don't want to okay. miss it. So right. Pastor Casey, can you lead us? Sure. Uh, father, 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 friend, Savior, Waymaker, yes. Teacher, Answers, Helper, we come before you um, asking you to lead and guide us to um, let there be aha moments, to let answers to prayers come up. Amen. to uh, make anything that is unclear, clear for us to know you more and love you more. And everything that you want to happen, this is your agenda. This is your time. These are your women. You know what all of us need. Yes, and God. so we say, have your way, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on in the room, y'all. Yes. Sisters are joining, joining, joining. This is good. So we've been away from each other for a week. So much happens in a seven-day period of time. Any ahas in reference to what we learned last week that just came over you in the last seven days that you want to share? Any ahas? Anything that you want to share that we need to, to soak in and be aware of? Raise your hand. Raise your hand so we can get you unmuted. We don't want to miss a thing. Or you can text it, put it in a chat, and write it in the chat. So it's up to you. Kim Prillerman, hello. Hi, Kim. Unmute yourself. Hello, beautiful ladies. Hello, hello. I have been soaking in the word all week long, but I'll tell you what manifested itself in my life this week. Last week, we talked a lot about faith, but most importantly, faith without movement is dead. And this week, I made some major moves I was obedient to the Lord, something he had been telling me for about six or seven months now. And I had to go out my way to make sure I pulled that thing through this week. And I'll tell you, I was uh, at church and a pastor also spoke very similar message that you, we all talked about last week. And it was all about not only being obedient, but movement. So it's listening, being obedient, but moving. So I made some major moves in terms of my personal ministry this week and reached out to some people at my church that were very happy to hear from me. And I mean, I was chasing them down Sunday. I couldn't find them. And when I got him on Monday on the phone, he said to me, pastor said to me, he said, somebody told me some lady was looking for you. He said, I did not. I said, it was me. I was running all around the church. So I stepped out and I'm working on the movement somebody in the in the uh, on the meeting last week said we we're talking about faith without works is dead and mm -hmm. somebody said faith without movement is dead and so i held it in my that spirit in the chat. <laughs> there you go that's right i don't know what member said it but i yeah. held on to that and i activated that thing so i'm mm -hmm. telling you i'm just i'm just overflowing i don't want to start crying but oh, you know i moved i moved this week thank you Amen. thank you thank yes. you Kim, thank you. Oh, God. God. I love that. Man. We love that. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody else. I saw so I saw an iPad, but the hand went down. Right. <laughs> oh, Shari and Jay, come on in. Unmute yourself. There you go. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi there. 
Um, last week was so good and it was a big aha for me because like we was talking about faith and, you know, do you have faith and, and, you know, God showed me a sign as far as my job and what I need to do. And he's basically telling me to leave my job. It was time for me to go. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to plan this out and I'm going to do this first. And I'm, and I'm trying to be in control of everything. And so I've been praying all week because I'm like, Lord, you gave me the sign and I'm still sitting on it. It's been a month later now and I haven't done anything about it. So it did make me question my faith, um, like, you know, just being in control of everything. So it's just it's been really good for me to just really go back and reflect, pray, ask for clarity. What do I need to do? And just take that step that I guess I'm afraid to take, you know. We know we know it well. Thank you for your transparency, Shari. Because we do we don't have all the answers. That's one of the reasons we study. So we can see precedent. Yeah. We can see other people that were afraid. We can see other people that struggled to move. We can see other people that moved and had the victory. We can see God saying, see, I told you. I'm not, I'm not a man. I'm not going to lie to you. Right. I'm not human. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to do something and not give you provision. So thank you so much for sharing that. And what we're going to touch and agree is that God gives you exactly what you need to be confirmed and affirmed to know exactly what to do through this Bible study, as far as what your next step should be. Mm -hmm. We touch and agree on that. Thank you. Uh, I see iPad. I'm not sure that you can change your name. Um, please change your name in the um, participants. But iPad said, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to be here. My best friend just passed today. Mm. And I really wow. need this more than ever. I'm so broken, but I'm glad I found this study. Mm. We are so sorry for your loss. We are so sorry for your loss. Yeah. Sis, Hi, Crystal. Sorry, Dr. Oh. Can you put, can you put your um can you go to the chat and send us because because all I could see was iPad. We want to know who you are so we can pray for you. Right. Please. And if you like, you. I, I don't want it to be public. You can send it to me or Pastor Casey or or um Crystal, but we want to know who you are so we can pray for you. Right. Absolutely please. We are sending you love. Mm -hmm. I just thought of her. And prayers. Mm -hmm. That her name is Catherine. Catherine. Okay. Catherine. Catherine. We are sending you prayers, sis. Your loss. Mm. Yeah. I would like to extend condolences to her first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, good evening, Dr. Nicole, um, Pastor Casey, and Crystal. I missed the first three because I was one of those moms picking up kids and doing this and doing that. But I didn't go to swim practice tonight because I was determined. <laughs> but I just want you guys to know I didn't miss anything. Mm. Because this morning, God woke me up at about two. Mm. And I was led to listen to a sermon just out of the blue. Mm. And it was about faith. And exactly what you all are saying right now. So you're absolutely correct, Dr. Nicole. Mm -hmm. He will confirm. Mm -hmm. And we have to stop and listen. Yeah. Um, I won't get into the details. I would love to be transparent, but I want to keep us moving forward today. But just know I have been toiling hard over decisions mm -hmm. here lately. And the sermon was basically saying, God brings us to opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we have to step into it and do the work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we have to have faith that he's bringing opportunity to us. We have to have ears and listen for the opportunity. Yeah. But God is literally mm -hmm. providing just as Dr. Nicole just mentioned. And we have to have the faith to take the step into the opportunities that he's given us. So thank you guys for doing this for all of us. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you all. And thank you, thank you Charlie. Katie and Charlie and watching that sermon. Mm -hmm.
at that time in the morning. That's that's just a blessing. Thank you. Catherine, we just gonna be lifting you up, okay? Yes. We are gonna be lifting you up. Amen. Who else would like to share an aha, if anything, from last week before we go into this next chapter? This is Jima. I'll share really quickly because y'all had me on on their ugly crying last week. I mean, it was really, really, I'm on the internet ugly crying. Um, but quick story, I, I took a, a quick recess, reset, refresh, went to Jamaica. Um, it's it's not, it's normal for me to be late for a flight, but the, I was really late for this flight. And when I headed out for my flight on Friday, I said, okay, God, I got a keychain on my mama. I said, it's me and you. I knew I was late. My phone was ringing. I wouldn't take anybody's call. I arrived at the airport at 1226. My flight took off at one o'clock. By the time I went through security, I was right there at my gate. Everybody was gathered. I walked up to this young lady and was like, are they loading the plane yet? She said, just for priority and families. I said, you look pretty. She said, you look pretty. On the microphone, they said, if Jima's in the house, would you please come to the front? I walked to the front. I literally walked into the airport, walked to the front, and he had bumped me up to first class and was like, you can load the plane. People have been what? there for two hours. <laughs> yeah. And in 10 minutes, I was on the plane. And then I came back yesterday to news that we had experienced a reduction in force, which was a lot of my angst last week. Mm -hmm. I think, you know... Um, I don't know if it's a blessing that I'm still still in the game. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I look at it that God still has work for me to do. But like many of the ladies on the phone, I'm ready to I'm ready to step out on faith and spread my wings. But for a long time, I've been scared. Um, but it's these kinds of epiphanies and and these times of coming together with faithful women that's helping me, you know, remember where my help comes from. Yeah. Emma, thank you for sharing that, sis. You know, um, it is a blessing um, because we know Romans 8, 28 says what, y'all? All things. All things work all together, together of those who serve the Lord. Not some things, mm -hmm. all, all things. things. And you know what? what's really um, profound about that is, you know, what he says is all things work together for the good. Now, good may not always be pleasant, but it's always good. It may not always be pleasant, but it's always good because God is strategic. Mm -hmm. You were just talking about reduction in force earlier this week, right? Uh, and God is God is very strategic. Sometimes He'll He'll nudge us that it's time to go. He'll send somebody. He'll send a bird, right? And we and we and and then He'll make us uncomfortable in that space. And then you might get to a point where He, you know, you have to go through the reduction in force. But He is moving you to something. He's moving you to something. So embrace that, sis. I'm excited for what God is about to do in your life. A whole new level is about to open up in your life. Embrace that in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Good stuff. Who's next? Anybody? Wow. Well, Pastor Casey. It's like, here we go, here we go. Let's get up. Look, let's get on the ride. Well, let's get on the ride. <laughs> Let me tell right? you. I feel like okay. I'm at Disney. Let me put my seatbelt on. <laughs> Buckle up because we moving. We moving. We moving. Uh, yes. And so um, we're on chapters five and six in the book of Joshua. And, um, you know, they've crossed over the the river. And they're getting ready to go into Jericho. And then all of a sudden, you hear them <laughs> talking about, and the Lord talking about circumcision and the Passover. And so I was like, what the, what, what, what? <laughs> you know, like, why would you <laughs> stop here? 
Right. You know, what, what, uh, is, as the King James Version says, what meaneth this Lord? And so, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I am, you know, searching and looking and um, thank God for God, mm -hmm. because I was like, what made it so important that you would stop and talk about circumcision and Passover before going into a series of battles? Mm -hmm. And so um, just to give you some context, in the ancient days, there were uh, three types of covenants and covenants were just simply uh, promises, agreements. You know, it's kind of like we do wills and treaties and different things. And um, as you grab your Bible, your your phone, your iPad, it doesn't make a difference. Um, it's it just opens up in Joshua five, one, two through three, talking about covenants. So this was a. Uh, how do I want to say this was very familiar in cultural times um, and the circumcision was a symbol of a covenant that God had made with the children of Israel and Abraham. So here's the, that's the significance. And so what was so cool about that was in verse one, um, you know, it talks about the kings first and then it goes into uh, two and three, but it says skipping down to two. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the heel of the foreskin. Um, I, I, I wouldn't want to be any place if I was a man that said the heel of the foreskin. But that's, <laughs> but that's what they called it. And so I was beginning to search and say, what, what does this really mean? Back in the ancient times, there were three covenants. And the first one was between two equals. So you might have a king and a king um, making a covenant together. And what was interesting, it was like a business contract. And, it's, and it basically would say, now here we're coming together. And you're a king and I'm a king. We have equal status. Now, if you stick to the plan and the agreement, I'll stick to the plan and agreement. <laughs> so that was uh, one form of a treaty or a covenant. The second one was um, with a, maybe a king and um, a soldier. The king had a higher status than the soldier. And basically the king would dictate the terms and the conditions in this type of agreement. It would be like, you going to do it just this way. And um, here's uh, the conditions of the term. And here's the consequences of the term. And so that was the type of, uh, of agreement that God had with the children of Israel when Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments. Hmm. Basically, he was talking with God and God said, we're entering a covenant. We're entering agreement. And if you obey me, there'll be blessings. <laughs> if you don't obey me, there'll be consequences. Right. And so that's where you read all that stuff in the end of Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy, where you're saying, where you're saying um, if you do this, uh, uh, then there'll be blessing. And if you don't do this, then this will happen. And you're like, what are all these laws and stuff? But you got to realize God was... Um, making laws and commandments because he was starting a new nation and a new civilization. So he was trying to bring order. So that's why, and I'm so glad that none of that applies to us today. And then the last type of, of covenant, which is the one that we're really interested in, this is a covenant that one party binds itself to an obligation for the benefit of someone else. One person takes on full responsibility for the benefit of someone else. And that's where you find uh, the Abrahamic covenant where God said, I'm going to make a covenant with you and I'm going to make sure that I bless your seed and you're going to have descendants and you're going to be a nation, the nation of Israel. I'm going to give you land. I'm, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to protect you. And so that's what we see here. God is trying to say to them, hey, 
Remember that covenant that I made way back then? That I'm going to fight for you, that you have land coming, that I'm going to bless your seed and your descendants. Um, my promises are coming forth. And here's the evidence of them as you're getting ready to go into battle. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to keep uh, this covenant. And what's so awesome about this covenant, you guys, in those days, they would always, uh, a lot of the covenants, you had to shed some blood. So they would take some animals and they would cut them in half. And when you did a covenant, if you had two parties like Christo and myself, both of us would walk through those sacrifices. And that would be a symbol of our agreement. But with the Abrahamic covenant, only God walked through the sacrifices. Because he's saying, I'm taking on full responsibility of this covenant all by myself. Hmm. You can't walk through this because I know people. <laughs> so I'm going to be the promise keeper. Hmm. I'm going to be the one that created the covenant. I'm going to be the one that keeps it moving forward. And I'm going to be the one that fulfills it. And so that symbol of circumcision was the symbol to remind them, I got you. It's on me a hundred percent. You know, and, <laughs> the, the, that sacrifice of um, the circumcision mm -hmm. um, reminds me that, you know, we have to give a sacrifice before the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're when we are going from new level to new level, which they were going from new level to new level, right? They were getting ready to even go higher in battle and, and, and inherit more land and more, you know, they were growing and they had to make a sacrifice so that God could, because if you look in nine, mm -hmm. um, verse nine, um, after they got circumcised, then the Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. And oftentimes it's when we get to the sacrifice that we will run back to our comfort zone. Right. Um, you know, you ever had you ever had something that you really wanted? Uh, maybe, you know, Dr. Nicole talks about um, her family buying a house. And then when it comes time for you to put that 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 earnest money down, make that sacrifice, mm -hmm. or you say to God, I want to I want to live in purpose. I want to do um I want to do your will. I want. And then he said, Okay, I need you to leave that job. Mm -hmm. You got to make a sacrifice. And oftentimes, you know, put a one in the chat if you if y'all know what I'm talking about. If you've ever come to a point where a sacrifice was required of you and you got scared. And you jump back and you might have run back to familiar or comfort. And some people spend their entire life, them 40 years that the, the Israelites was out there, 40 years circling the same tree, circling the same tree because they weren't willing to make the sacrifice. So it really, this shows me, you know, that you got to have some skin in the game. God caused us to have some skin in the game. For them, it was a circumcision, right? What is it for you? What is the skin in the game that God is calling for you to have so that he can roll away the reproach, so that he can um, defend you in battle? Because after they did that and God rolled away the reproach, in 12, it says the manna stopped the day after they ate this, this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. Woo! They reaped the harvest. Mm -hmm. They reaped the harvest after they made the sacrifice. Yeah. So what is it that God is asking of you to sacrifice? What is your skin in the game for what it is you're asking him for? Yeah. It's what's the movie we always talk about since God Almighty, Evan Almighty. Oh where it says, when you pray and ask God to give you courage, He doesn't just give you courage, He gives you opportunities to be courageous. Right? So, what is it that you are asking Him for? And He's saying, okay, 
well, I need some skin in the game. I need to know we in this, that you go, that you are faithful and you want to make a covenant with me and you have some skin in the game. Yeah. And, and, you, and yeah. Go can on. I say something about that too? Here, yeah. Here's what just came to me. Oh my goodness. God pays it all. Mm -hmm. He promises. He takes the brunt of it. The whole thing. Yes. Then he asks for a sacrifice. But anything he asks us to sacrifice is borrowed. Hmm. Mm. I want y'all to sit on that for a hot second. He's asking you to sacrifice something that he loaned to you. Because don't nothing belong to you. That's why when you leave here, you leave with nothing. And when you come here, you come with nothing. So anything he's saying, so show me, in, in, in my words, show me that you understand who you are in covenant with. Because anything I ask you to sacrifice is something that I've loaned to you. Your child, I loaned them to you. Your money, your job, it's all, it's all loan, borrow, right? Temporary possession. It's something you don't need. It's right. It because without me, you don't have it. You can bring forth life, but somebody's got to breathe life into the birth of your baby, right? Mm -hmm. The job. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't, I just can't. You were once praying for that job because you didn't have that job. You get the job. Now God says, leave the job. And you're like, I can't leave my good job now, Jesus. He's <laughs> like, oh, remember, that's the one that I gave you. Do, do we remember that? You, you asked me for that. I gave you that. Lord, I want a house. My babies need some place to play. This place is too small. I need a house, Jesus. Lord, I need. And God says, okay, not a problem. Now you're called upon to make a sacrifice. Maybe it's for a season. Maybe it's for a moment. Oh, I can't. And I'm, I'm, I'm taken by that because I'm like, wow, God, we a trip. Like as people, you really do know us. Like you, you know, know that we will struggle even giving you something that you gave us. Right. And, and what was so cool about this particular covenant, God was going to fulfill it regardless. This was one of the unconditional covenants. So it was, he was like, now I want you to cooperate. But even if you don't cooperate, it's I mean, on me a hundred percent. And so, I mean, and so I, there's, there's nowhere on this earth, but God that does it unconditionally with unconditional love. And he puts it on us. He said, the work that I have started in you, I will be faithful to complete it because we just don't have what, it, what we need. You know, he's given us gifts, but he knows we're not going to be perfect and make a decision every time. And so that, um, you know, that's what this passage is pointing back to us. And what what also is good, besides what Dr. Nicole and Crystal said, it's a place of vulnerability and dependence. Mm -hmm. Because here we are going to war. Mm -hmm. The people heard about us. They've been watching us. And now we're being circumcised and we need a time to heal. They can, they can come upon us and just take out all the men of war, all the men. <laughs> and um, because um, uh, remember uh, David's son did that. His sister got raped and what happened in another passage, he, uh, the guy wanted to marry his sister, just uh, a story in the Bible. And so his, uh, but he had mistreated her and her brother says, okay, you can marry her, but our custom is circumcision. So all your men have to be circumcised. And so what they did was they all got circumcised and they came in and they wiped out every man in the camp, camp, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know, it was like a, it was like a uh, deceitful. And so um, they had to be like, wait a minute, we're going to be vulnerable. Wait a minute. God's going to have to protect us. We're going to have to be totally dependent on God. And what happens in when we're trying to make a decision, the hardest part is when God strips me of my independence. Because mm-hmm. I'm a, I, I am good for wanting to be in control. Anybody, <laughs> anybody uh, good for wanting to be in control? Put it, put a chat in the one, raise your hand. Woo, woo. Yes. And so um, here's a picture of him stripping them of their independence and saying, you're going to do this your way or my way. But you know what's cool? He covers the obedience and the sacrifice. Yes. That, so when I saw, it was like, he's like, yeah, you're going to get circumcised, but I'm, I'm going to cover you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bother you. Nobody's going to be able to get to you. You're going to have a time to rest. You're going to have a time to heal. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're going to be covered. So yet again, he's mm-hmm. like, your protection is still mine. Mm-hmm. Your provision is still mine. The burden is still mine. I got you. We talk about 10 toes down. 10 toes are nothing to me. Like I've got you, got you. And when you make a move to be obedient and to give the sacrifice, these are my words, I, I quadruple got you. Cause even when you're down, I cover you so that you are not harmed. You are not bothered. That That's like, whoa. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say is, whoa, we serve a God like that. We serve a God like that, like that. I mean, that is so awesome. I was just like, um, you know, a God that wants the best for us, that's willing to help us get there, <laughs> that will do whatever is necessary. I'll, I'll do a miracle if I need to. I'll go ahead of uh, you before you even pull out a sword if I need to. I will uh, make sure that the people's heart have melted before you even get there. Whatever's necessary, I'm willing to do that if you would decide to obey me and do what I require for you to do. I mean, that is awesome. And um, but sometimes, you know, knowing all of that and walking it out are two different things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> One more time. Look, that's, that's the fight in my head and my mind and my heart and my will and my thoughts, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's why way back in one, he was like, that's why you need to meditate on me. That's why you got to meditate on my word. That's why you got to keep your eyes on me, eyes on me. Um, one year I had that on a poster in my office, eyes on me, eyes on me, because my eyes will be everywhere. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that manna experience is real, sis. Mm -hmm. You know, put a, put a one in the chat. If you've ever been in, had a manna experience where your, your, your cupboards are empty. Mm -hmm. The, the, the cupboards are empty. The coffers are bare, but every day God is providing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every day he's showing up. You don't know how it's going to get done. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know how, but every day he is providing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you just like, oh God, I don't know. And you just got to keep your eyes stayed on him. Like you said, Pastor Casey, because you just like, I don't know how it's going to get done. I, I, when I look at my resources, when I look at who's here for me, when I look at my, my bank account, I, I don't know how I'm going to accomplish what God is calling me to do, but every day he just keeps showing up. Right. He just, he just, he's there. He's, he's providing that manna experience. Ain't no joke. Right. But the good news is it came a time when they were able to eat of the harvest. Right. And I saw uh, Shalanda put in here, you know, how faithful God is that even though their father's, uh, broke the covenant 
right right and 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 they and they died off in the wilderness god still gave the people the chance to inherit the land and eat the fruit right god, he's he's so faithful he is so faithful gretchen says she has a testimony gretchen come on tell hey, us your gretchen. testimony hey gretchen hi um okay so this was back in my college. I have many testimonies, but this one goes back to my college days. So, you know, first generation college student, uh, try not to always call home. Home doesn't have too much to always be able to share with you. And I had a job where I was working at the Department of Parks and Recs. And they had told me when I got this job that you would not get paid for the first 30 days. And so I was prepared for that. But then I got the check, the first check, and somebody had made a mistake. And mm -hmm. the check was for $5 mm -hmm. instead of $500. Now, you know, back in the 80, in the 90s, you could do something with $500 when you were young. But oh. to have a check for $5, it took them two months. Mm. Two months. And this is going to sound strange because I was never a person who ever believed in anything like a lottery or or scratcher or anything like that and so you know i i didn't know what to do i said well lord how, how am i gonna eat how am i gonna put gas in the car i don't i don't understand jesus how is this supposed to happen and i was at 7-eleven and some a little voice said why don't you go over there and use that little scratcher i was like i don't do that and I went over there and did a little scratch and the little scratch came and it said $20. Back then you could do $10 worth of food and $10 worth of gas. Yes. And then, and then the, I got that and I said, well, well, it only cost a dollar. So I went the next week back to 7-Eleven and the next week I scratched another and it was another $20. That was $10 worth of gas and $10 worth of food. Thank you, And Lord. somehow he just kept providing over and over again. Manna, manna. Dollar moments that would turn into $20 that would last me one more week until the next week, until the next week. And sometimes I now have come to understand when I'm getting to my moments where I feel like, okay, okay God, this, this has got to be the period in it all. So always remind me, I knew where you were supposed to be before you got there. I knew when you woke up in the morning how the day was going to end. Yeah. Amen. That's, just link me to it. Yeah, that there is no surprise in him. Nope. He is not surprised. We are often surprised, but he is not surprised. Um, you know, one of the things that I that I think is such a blessing in the manna season, because those seasons are so hard is whether or not you continue to go to the cupboard. Hmm. Hmm. I want you to think about that. You know you ain't put nothing in there. But you go to the cupboard with expectation. You go to the mail with expectation. You get up and you take a shower and you go out with expectation. And you're saying, now God, I, I, I have no more resources. And he's saying, but you still have me and I am the source. Mm -hmm. So nobody's losing here. You still have me. I'm the source. So you may not have resources, but they all come from me. No loss. Everybody's winning yes. in this conversation with me. That's so good. I see yeah. Kimberly. Kimberly, she's got a testimony. Come on through, sis. Hi, Kimberly. Unmute yourself. Kimberly, unmute yourself. She's having a hard time. I don't think she may have access to it. She should be able to unmute. Kimberly? I think she's trying to say she can't unmute sis. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. come back, Kimberly. Hold hold on to it and try to come back. Right. Um, yeah. speaking of of manna, it was so crazy because um God was like, I gave them manna 
which was a miracle. They had to just wake up. You look on the ground and manna was everywhere. Yeah. So I'm having a conversation with a guy about this man. And he said, Casey, I gave them manna every day for 40 years. Fresh manna. Mm. Fresh man. That's over, that's like 14,600 miracles every day. Mm. Come on. Every day, a miracle for 14,600 days in a row. And, and yet, they would believe, do something wrong, and repent. Mm. <laughs> and so it, it was like... Um, this is why I have to do reminders. This is why I stop in the middle of battles. This is why I tell you to meditate on the word because it's so easy to get off and to get concerned and to not remember who I am and what I want to do for you. Yeah. And I was just like this. You know how you just go like this? Like you almost want to put, I, I, I almost want to put just tape on my mouth and sit in there like this, sitting in it. <laughs> <laughs> what drop the mic what can i what can i say now? you know what can i say now lord but that's the kind of god um mm -hmm. that we have that's mm -hmm. the kind of god that's for us you know and that's working on our behalf mm -hmm. and and when he provides it every day when do we get to a point where we stop trying to hoard it mm -hmm. because we don't believe he's mm. going to do it again. Mm. Put a two in the chat if if you know exactly what I'm speaking of. Pastor Casey just said, every day. Every day. So when do you stop feeling like you got to hide some in the cupboard? Is that the 13,000th day? Is that the 20th day? Is that the 14,000th day where you get to the point where you say, oh, this is your nature. Mm -hmm. this, this, oh, you are the source, the provider, the miracle, the miracle worker. Because, I, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes I'll be like, well, what if you forget? And I feel like he looks and says, Nicole, what if I forget? I'd be like, oh, no, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, like, how do I know? Mm He's -hmm. like, you know, because you know me. But when you focus on you, mm -hmm. then it's about what you don't know. You don't know how you don't know when you can't calculate how I make it every day. So then you're thinking, well, what if? And he's like, that's why my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm. That's why my way is not your way, Nicole. Mm. Casey, Laquanda, right. Charlie, Kim, Sheila. He's like, I do it my way. And, and you, you can bet on that. Mm -hmm. There's no risk in that. Mm. Mm. put a two in the chat if you've ever experienced a moment where you're like god you're not the risk i was the risk mm -hmm. you weren't the risk i'm figuring that out wow mm. i i you waiting on me to show up you know it's so funny because the lesson i learned on that nicole is that I thought I surely I had faith of a mustard seed. Surely, surely. I had a mustard seed, right? And what God showed me is my faith was based on what I had in the storehouse. Yeah. Put a one in the chat. If you got faith, as long as you got a 401k, some savings in the bank, uh, a backup plan, you got a little control, right? <laughs> you like, oh, yes, it'll be all right, because I know I got. God said, that's not faith. That's control. That's ego. Mm -hmm. right. Faith is when you are solely trusting the source. 
Yeah. And when you don't have, if you don't have anything, yeah. if you don't have anything to, to, to fall back on, you just taking a leap of faith. You just making a move in faith. No, and it has nothing to do with your own ability. Yeah. It is fully trusting that God is a promise keeper, that God is faithful, that God's got you and he's not going <laughs> to let you fail. Yeah. That for me, when I tell you that was a wake up call, mm -hmm. that was a wake up call because he was like, no, you don't have faith. You don't have faith. I'm going to teach you faith though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to teach you. Anybody ever been through a locust experience? Put a two in the chat. If you've ever been through the locust experience where God really teach you what faith look like. Mm -hmm. Woo, my God, my God, yeah. my God. Yeah, and it's so funny that you say that um, because when I read Joshua's story, I wrote in my notes, faith, faith in God stops at nothing. Mm. When, you, when you really have that resolve in that situation, because our faith is going to be tested again and again and again, because he's trying to build up our faith, build up our courage. Um, show us who he is. Mm. And so um, and so I, I'm so grateful that he gives me another chance mm. because the enemy just wants us to sit up there and, and you know, critique ourselves, be hard on ourselves, um, you know, on and on and on. And God's like, I, I got you. I know you. That's, the case That's why I made the covenant myself. With myself, <laughs> man, Gretchen said, I think sometimes we think he will not show up because of our past sins, and this is our punishment, and that's exactly what you're saying. Yes, yes, I mean, or I will, um, sometimes I can be so hard on myself, um, yeah. because as Crystal said, sometimes I think I'm farther along than what I really am, and then God reminds me of me. Mm. And he's and and I truly believe that he reminds me of me because he's like, um, I don't want you to get so far ahead. And mm. then you have a, a Samson experience where you flex and nothing happens when you go out and fight the enemy. I <laughs> want you to get out there. And That's then you good. come back, you come back like this. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so, so he lovingly corrects us. He yeah. lovingly. Yes. Um, he, you know, he he could put your stuff all out there for everybody to see, but he lovingly corrects us. Yeah. And sometimes in our home, sometimes, you know, in the office, sometimes with the family member. And uh, and that's how much he wants us to get it. He wants us to have the muscle mass for the yes. Family. Yes. That we are going into. Yes. So it's yes. not, it's not for condemnation. Mm -hmm. It's so that you could get back in the gym. He's like, I need you to go back in the gym because it's another fight coming. Yes. And I want you to be prepared and equipped and be ready for victory. Cause I'm going to be there with you to help you. Um, mm -hmm. Even, even in, another thing that blew me away in this chapter was um, when he was like, okay, it's time to celebrate the Passover. And once again, I was like, what? Okay, first the circumcision, then the Passover. And does anybody remember what happened with the Passover, just to refresh, refresh us, when they were um, leaving Egypt, and God uh, passed over them? Does anybody, can anybody explain what happened? The blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb you know, over the doorpost. Right. The to blood of the save your your firstborn son, you know, to save your household, to identify your household as one that was protected by the, the blood. Right. And so it was an opportunity for them to actually be in agreement, um, to be in covenant, because it was a choice of theirs. And they had so much time to do so, or else the angel was going to pass through the night and their mm -hmm. firstborn would be taken. And that was left over for the Egyptians. But if they weren't obedient, then they were going to fall prey to that too. Right. So you guys are absolutely right. And I, I 
really want to get this right because this just blew my mind and it opened up my heart to love God even more. Because I was like, well, what's that got to do with us today? Because, <laughs> you know, we're not going to put the blood over the doorpost, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, it, it pointed to the new covenant that we now have with God. Mm -hmm. And so what's so awesome about this new covenant that we now have with God, God spoke about it in Luke twenty two twenty 20, when Jesus said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, you know, um, and it's and it's where we get the Lord's Supper from. You know, do this in remembrance of me. So what's so cool about this is he's at the table with his disciples. This is before he goes into the uh, before he's about to get crucified and they're at the table and they're like, we're about to do the Passover. Yeah, Lord, we know. We know that's when you, you know, you passed over us. And he all of a sudden says. This cup is the new covenant. I'm doing something new. This is not like the rules and, and the commandments and the law. I'm doing something so new during this time. And he's saying that this is the cup of, um, this is a covenant in my blood. I'm about to go and die for you. I'm about to go and shed my blood. And animals won't ever have to do this again. Well, you won't ever have to make a sacrifice because I'm about to be the, the sacrifice. And when he says, you know, um, do this in remembrance of me, um, he's saying, I just, what is it? I, I just like shifted the game because you guys were the nation of Israel and I made a covenant with you. When I brought in the new covenant, this is a covenant for the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> it's for everybody on this line. See, it used to be where it was just the, the Jewish people. But he's like, no, in this covenant, I'm going to die for the whole world. And whoever wants a relationship with me can have a relationship with me. So here, can you imagine if you uh, were brought up in the Jewish content, context and, and culture? You were like, you're about to open this up for everybody. And you everybody? talking about shit. Yeah. And you talking about shedding your blood. You supposed to be the king. You supposed to come and rule. You're supposed to, uh, uh, and we're supposed to rule with you. And you, so now they I, I can just see them at the table leaning in, going, What you talking about? We was the chosen people. Now you letting everybody. <laughs> And so this is what makes it so important um, because this points to our new covenant where forgiveness of sins, you know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. We no longer have a priest because, you know, priests would have to go before God. Um, there's going to be no more bloodshed because my blood is going to be the final blood. And I'm not, it's going to be... Um, relational. It's going to be about me and you. And guess what? Everybody's going to be welcome. I know I chose you as a chosen people for the moment because I think that still goes back into today, but they don't mention, people don't mention the new covenant. Yes, you were the chosen people. Yes, God did choose you. But when he did the new covenant, he opened it up for everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Praise God. <laughs> You know, and so um, so that's pointing to us, you know, he's telling them about the Passover. Yes, but it's bigger than that for us today, because that's the agreement that we have with God today. Mm. And everybody's welcome. Mm. Jews, Gentile, women, men, everybody's welcome. <laughs> Amen. Which also means we can't keep anybody out. Yes. That's what I got from that. Mm -hmm. So That's don't good. you go trying to keep nobody out yeah. with your flesh, with your limited understanding, mm -hmm. with your pride, with your judgment, with your conscious bias, with your unconscious bias, with all your stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't you go pushing anybody out mm -hmm. because I was intentional with this covenant. So everybody would be in. Everybody. Mm. That's I, so you know. 
you know, and I was intentional with this covenant so that every sin would be forgiven. Amen. Because I think in churches, what we do is I always say we have the big three sins, you know, where it's like, those are the ones that will be like, don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do, you know, and as, of course, it always has to do with, you know, sexual immorality, you know, um, er, you know, it's and, um, and certain things like that. But um, he's like, covered it all. So don't be selective and judge people and say your sin. I want he, he, that's a big one. <laughs> Look, I don't care what you want. Because that's the unconditional covenant of the new covenant. That's the unconditional love of the new covenant that applies to us. That's beautiful. And he's just trying to say, I need you to get this with all your heart and with all your cha-cha and with everything that you know. So the enemy won't be able to stop you. The enemy won't be able to hinder you. The enemy won't have you questioning. I know who you are. I know what I put in you, when I put in you. I equipped you to do it and I covered it all. So when you gonna show up, like I told you to show up. Mm. Mm. That part. part. <laughs> that part. <laughs> now, what, excuses do that? We got? What, what excuses we got? <laughs> you know, when we you gonna do that? disarms us because he knew that like a Moses we would say but 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 but, but I can't speak <laughs> like I chose you anyway I chose you anyway mm. yeah. you the the chat, if, that, if, that just, if that just spoke to you put a one in the chat if you just had an aha moment uh, look Charlie said all my toes all of them are going to show up <laughs> you, yes. know, you know what ladies um when I was studying this part this week um because I try to study for me first and then say, Lord, what do you want to say to them? Yeah. And, um, and so I was talking to God and he was talking back and he said, basically, I equipped you. I put purpose in you. I called you. I prepared you. I put provision in place for you to do what you needed to do because I needed a you on the earth. And he told me to say to you, I needed a you and you and you and you and you on this earth for this time, this space, and this moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, and it, it, Pastor Casey, that's so good because, you know, I teach my granddaughter. I said, he, God gave you a gift before you were born. Mm -hmm. And that gift is not for you. It's for others. It's for mm -hmm. you to serve others. So that's so powerful because he needs us to walk in our purpose because somebody is waiting on us to yes. show up, right? Yeah. Somebody is waiting on that gift. And that's how, when we return back to him, that's how we hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. When we return back empty handed, mm -hmm. we've done what God called us to do. Uh, we've used the purpose that he's given us. We've, we've done, we've completed the assignments. And when we are procrastinating, when we are dragging our feet, when we're self-doubting ourselves, mm -hmm. negative talking ourselves, sabotaging ourselves from showing up in who God called us to be, it doesn't just hinder us, right? Mm -hmm. It's somebody else that's waiting on you to walk in that purpose. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's all we all it, we're very connected. You are not here alone. We are all connected, right? Right. And I and I think that's a perfect segue because in the next chapter it talks about um, if you have your Bible or you want to pull out your notes um, and verses one through five, it says, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and mm -hmm. none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you, you shall do six days and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass 
when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the walls of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when you faced with a decision like that, God can bring you into victory, but not the way you think it's going to happen. <laughs> and you are not going to do what you think you have to do because our mind be running. But what if I have to do this? And what if I have to do that? And what, what about this, Lord? And what about tomorrow? And so um, God will bring about his results and he does them in an unusual manner so we can never take the credit. Mm. Pastor Casey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Question. So, just before we get into six with mm -hmm. the fall of Jericho, um, in five thirteen, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, it says, "Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand." Joshua went up to him and asked, "Are you for us or our enemies?" Neither he replied. Mm -hmm. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does the, does the Lord have for his servant? Mm -hmm. The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Mm -hmm. When I read that, I was like, hmm, why did the commander come? Why was he mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. And... Why was he for neither? Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't say anything else after that. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua after that. Right. What was the what was the significance? First mm -hmm. of all, I I I, I recognize. Oh, the Lord has a whole army that's going before me. Right. Mm -hmm. He's got a whole army, and there's a commander of that army mm -hmm. that's going before us. Right. But what was the significance of that? Oh, did you see me rocking? I was like this. I saw you rocking. I saw you rocking. <laughs> um, what I what I love about this is um, when you look at angels appearing, then what they usually say to men is, "Get up," because you know men be falling to the ground. However, angels look, however big they are, whatever they look like, men be you know like men be I like this. Prostrate, like, yes. you know. You know um, and um, in, in this specific instance, when he fell down and they spoke of holy ground, it was just like when Moses had the encounter with the burning bush and it was actually the Lord. And so what you have here is this, um, it's and um, Christophany, Christophany is an, when Jesus appears, before he came on earth and he's with man in the old testament mm -hmm. and so he is if you look through scripture the commander of the army of the lord so it was jesus himself showing up to say i'm not for you i'm i'm for whatever god wants in this moment in time and and i do bring an army with me and I am standing here because I am going to make sure whatever we said we would do, it's going to be done. Whatever God said was going to happen in this covenant, I, I, I want you to know once again, because he could have done it and fought um, and put people in place. And what I love about this, help me God, is it says his sword was already drawn like he wasn't playing. Right. He was already like prepared in position for battle. And, and then it says he came up on him. And so it's like, you go before me mm -hmm. and you fight my battle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't even see you. I don't even know you're there. Mm. And you're handling stuff on my behalf. But this is the time that I pulled back the curtain. To let you see it mm -hmm. and I didn't send just my army because yes they're behind me I came to mm. fight for you 
personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. You know, and so, so I love that you took us back to that because when I first read that, I was like, you already have your sword drawn. You're not playing. Mm -hmm. You are already here to win. And, and you, and he was headed to where the war was and God was already there. Mm. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, he was already there. And that's amazing to me um, that sometimes we don't see it and it doesn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. And he gives the most unusual commandments. Mm. But that's why this whole picture was so important because he's the God that keeps his promises mm. and that keeps his agreements with us. Charlie yeah. says, thanks, Pastor Casey. Baffling that he asked him to do something so simple to mm -hmm. reference the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. reference the Holy space, obedience in the moment. Yes. I thought about that passage in depth like that. Mm. Yeah, it's a Christophan for me. I always get a tongue towards it. Christophany, Christophany, that's what it is. When Jesus um, appears in the Old Testament before he appeared on earth, because he's eternal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just decided to step into time for us and become the ultimate sacrifice. And this, you know, it was a reminder too. It was a reminder that this was a holy space mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, put God first. Yes. Your ego. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm not, um, I'm going to keep my command, mm -hmm. but ultimately I am God and my decisions are perfect. Mm -hmm. So whatever you think your outcome can be, mine is going to be greater and better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, sometimes we, you know, I'm always saying, God, if you just do it this way, if you just come this way, I have the answer. And he's like, mine is going to be better. Mine is going to be greater. Mine is going to be far more than you can imagine a thing. Mm. Um, that's why you went to Jericho. And my weapon was drawn, but you didn't have to draw yours. The walls came down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. And yeah. Pastor Chris, is it something to do too with him taking off the sandals? Because wherever uh -huh. you place your feet, it's mm. holy ground. It's like I'm a holy, perfect mm. God. Mm. And so um, I'm so holy. I'm, just, you know, don't get me started because <laughs> what I'm thinking of now is I, you're a holy. You're so holy, you're so pure that the ground is now holy because of your presence. Amen. And um, I can't trust that God. Right. You don't have lie in you. You don't have deceit in you. You don't have unrighteousness in you. You don't have sin in you. You're wholly different than anything and anyone else. Mm -hmm. And what I love about moments like this is um, he's just loving on us and saying, this is why we get into the word. So I just want you to know more about me. Yeah. This is why we get into the word, because I want a better relationship with you. This is why we get into the word, because I'll open it up. And I'll show you me in ways that you don't even understand. And it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help you understand my love for you and who you have um, backing you and on your behalf. Man. Mm. Mm. I'm thinking so much over here <laughs> because I'm thinking about um, moments in my life where it was clear that he was there mm -hmm. and how his presence shifted the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a song that arrests me to this day where he talks about, you know, 
we're waiting and anticipating the moment yeah you will appear and then we recognize you're already here mm -hmm. right and just just thinking about you know god i don't want to miss you like i don't i i want to be clear when you show up Right. The atmosphere. You're sovereign and you're always mm -hmm. here. You're here and there and back there. You're all mm -hmm. it, at the same time. Yeah. But those moments where you're standing there with your sword, yeah. I want to know. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to feel the atmosphere mm -hmm. shift mm -hmm. when my when my dad is is showing his presence to me. Yeah. So that I can respond with the understanding that you're already here. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I, I want to have that response because I know once you're here, mm -hmm. what was is not right now. Right. It just became holy. Mm -hmm. The ground that I'm standing on just mm -hmm. became holy. And mm -hmm. I want to have the right response. I don't want to miss you. Right being distracted with my past, being distracted with my ego, being mm -hmm. distracted with not being enough, being mm -hmm. distracted with what you saw, what I did, being distracted with what you saw, what I said. I want to be focused on what is important is that you are here. Mm -hmm. That's just, yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Um, I was just praying and I'm going to do a one line prayer over us. Um, Lord, make us aware of you. Yes. Amen. Amen. You Amen. know, that shifts everything. Yes. <laughs> make us aware. Yes. Ooh, that's so good, y'all. We've got nine minutes. <laughs> so, ahas and takeaways. Who would like to give us an aha and take away from tonight's Bible study? Raise your hand or unmute yourself. Come on, Classy, let's go. So God is with us. Mm -hmm. He's with us. He's here with us. He's there before we even get there. Mm -hmm. Where God is, it's holy. <laughs> So that means here is holy. That's good. If God God is here with me, mm -hmm. He was there before I got there. He was He is here with His sword drawn, and because He's here, or because He was like He was there with Joshua, the ground was holy. Mm -hmm. If God is ever present and He's always with me. Here is holy. Mm -hmm. That's my aha. Amen. Amen. And you can't lose. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't lose. Mm, that's so good. Who else? Uh, Catherine. Oh, go ahead. Catherine, then I'll come back that, to you. That everything is spiritual. That this is not our final place. Mm -hmm. Then I don't mm -hmm. see my friend again. Yes. Well, <laughs> then she's in a better place. Mm -hmm. Then the pain that I feel is just temporary. Mm -hmm. Then he still be there for me, even through mm -hmm. losing someone. Yes, yes. It may not feel fair, mm -hmm. but it was his time, his choice to call her home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God lends you your his greatest angels, and you got to be grateful. Mm -hmm. You got to be grateful for the time you get with your loved ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tomorrow's not promised. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have went and seen her a little sooner. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I wish I would have spent time with her when I had the chance. Mm -hmm. I kept putting it off because I was busy. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that she was struggling with cancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was going through chemotherapy. Mm. And she probably needed me. <laughs> and I feel guilty for that. Catherine, <laughs> <laughs> the enemy is going to offer you all kinds of <laughs> in the next couple days, weeks guilt, resentment, condemnation. He's just going to come forward and offer you all kinds of things. <laughs> but sis, we, we receive your tears. Yes. We hold the space for you to experience your grief. Mm -hmm. We hold the space for you to be comforted by he who is the ultimate comforter. And we <laughs> hold the space for your friend, the decisions, the choices mm -hmm. that she made, the, the decisions mm -hmm. to be private. We just hold the space for all of it. And we, you know, death is to dance with it. It is such uh, a dance, right? We yeah. dance we have all experience. If we come of any age, we experience mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and it is challenging. But we hold the space for you to be able to grieve and remember. Mm -hmm. Grieve yeah. and celebrate. Grieve You're and celebrate. Right. You know, be grateful that I do get to have my child. At least I have my kids. Mm -hmm. At least I'm grateful that I woke up. Mm -hmm. That I have people that love me. And I'm going to hold my babies tight tonight. I'm going to hold them so tight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I agree with um, Dr. Nicole. And, um, and I thank you for unmuting and sharing. Because this is that type of space. Yes. You know, and um, I was supposed to be here. And yeah. uh, I've been wanting to come for the last two weeks, but it seemed like I miss it. I miss it. I just miss it. I miss it. I never make it on time. Mm -hmm. But today I got a text message, and I don't normally get a text message, but it said to join. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I felt like that was the Lord's way of saying, you know, surround yourself with yeah. good people and to hear his word even yeah. though I did just get devastating news you know I, I needed this you know yeah. I needed somebody to talk to because sometimes it can feel like you don't have anyone yeah. let me tell you how much God loves you he's so strategic he loves you so much just this Monday, we were having our internal team meeting on our planning for the week. And I think it was you, Dr. Nicole, who said, can we make sure? No, it was you, Pastor Casey, who said, Pastor Casey said, can we make sure they get a text right mm -hmm. before Bible study? Right. Because the emails are good, but some people need a text. This was Monday. No. So God is so strategic mm -hmm. and he's so thoughtful. He put it in her heart on Monday because he knew what you would be going through today and you would need a reminder. I thank you, God, that you yes. are here with us. Yes. Yeah. Because God wants you to know, too, we come into this world of spirit, and when we are released, we are a spirit. Your yeah. wife knows how much you love her. Mm -hmm. She knows how much you love her. She is yeah. not. She is mm -hmm. not in a spiritual space condemning you. That, yeah. like Doctor yeah. Nicole said, that is the enemy that wants mm -hmm. to offer you that. She knows you love her. God, it loved her most and foremost and for always. Mm -hmm. And He loves you so much yeah. that He's like, put it in Pastor Casey's heart two yeah. days ago. 
to put that, make sure we get that text out so that you could join. Yeah. Thank you, and, and thank you guys in the text. I mean, if you just read the text, they're sending up prayers for you. They're sending up hugs and love. And, um, and I just think that it is so important for us to grieve. Because yeah. sometimes we press it down and stuff it and we move forward. And yeah. God has said, grieve, you just don't have to grieve like everyone else when you know a certain loved one is with me. But I want you to grieve. Yeah. Yeah. So so this is, you know, it's part of our life. So I thank you for being open and not, you know, stuffing it and for expressing yeah. it because um, he said we can grieve. Just um, make sure you know, you know, that um, with, when they have a relationship with me, they are with me while you're grieving. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, can Latoya wants to know if she can say something to Catherine. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Latoya. Unmute yourself. Um, I just want you to know, Catherine, that I have been in your shoes nine years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. My best friend passed away actually on her birthday. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um. And before she passed away, four days before she passed away, I was actually on a retreat and a dance retreat. And she reached out to me, um, telling me, and I told her I was on a retreat in Ohio on a retreat. And she said, when you get home, come see me. And I said, okay. I did not, I wasn't able to see her right away once I got home because I was sick. I got sick on the way coming back. So on her birthday, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go see her. Yeah. Um, because I didn't get a chance to go see her. And before I could get to her, I got a text message on my phone from her brother letting me know that she passed. I didn't understand at first until I called her mom and I'm like, where's Tab? And she's like, resting in the arms of Jesus. But while I was on that retreat, um, God was telling me how to love my friend from a distance. And I kept saying like, I feel like God is telling me that I need to learn to love her from a distance. He was preparing me for what he was getting ready to do. Mm -hmm. And who knows? Like, who knew? On her birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is sad. I'm sorry for your loss. But he prepared me um, to love her from a distance. So, and it's been, like I said, it's been nine years. Yeah, I have good days and I have bad days, but I know it increased my faith in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm able. She does have uh, children, so I'm able to see her children. Mm -hmm. I am able to be there for her children's children. Mm -hmm. Well, her daughters, she has now has children of her own that my best friend did not get a chance. So you'll be OK um, is a reason why. You were here today, and for me to be able to share with you that you'll get through. It's tough right now, but trust me when I say dig deeper into him, and you will get through. Thank, Thank you. you. And come back to Bible study. Amen. I will come back with Dr. Nicole. I want you to know I am a big fan of you. <laughs> I'm a big fan of you. I always dream of the opportunity to speak to you. And you gave me that opportunity today. And I'm going to let you know that. I'm going to be right here. You don't, have to, you don't have to be isolated in your pain. That's good. You don't have to be alone in your pain. You come right back here. We're all going to be here. And when we see you, yeah. it says, Catherine, see We'll be praying. Mm -hmm. And when we think of you, we'll be praying because we've all lost somebody. If you, you know, oh, for, okay, live long enough. Mm -hmm. If you just live long enough, you will know what it is to love and to lose. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be right here as you are pressing forward and, and trying you. to make sense of this shift, right? It's, it's a shift in the atmosphere. When Thank I'm you. And we honor you and we honor your friend. And y'all just keep Catherine in your prayers. 
Thank you all for your beautiful words in the in the Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Chat. So you are covered in prayer. We're holding the space for you. We are holding Thank you, prayer. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and I see Marsha Chap Chapman in there, and she said that she just buried her only sister, her best friend, for 79 years last Friday. And she Thank said, you. and there is hope in the Lord. So we cover Marsha, we cover Catherine and others that you know have have loss and um and this is a safe space mm -hmm. and a in a space where you you have spaces that say christian isms like you know i i that's just my pet peeve when someone says they're in a better space and blah, 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 blah. but this is really a space that is caring it's confidential it's sincere um, and you can be who you are without judgment. Yes. And and I would like to, you know, celebrate um, something. You know, I believe that when we are blessed to have our elders, we should honor them. So Pastor Casey's mom, I believe, was here a little while ago. I believe right. I <laughs> she, she was on the camera. Yep. Um, yep. There she is. Um, there she is. Um, how are you? We are yeah. grateful that you are here. And I gotta, I gotta send a special shout out to my aunt. So my my auntie Phyllis is here. Auntie Phyllis, what's going on? Listen, y'all, my y'all know some of you know my story that I'm a miracle baby. My mother had uh, two live births, children who had names and personalities and. And um, she had two miscarriages and was told she wouldn't be able to have any more children. And as the story goes, the one I know is that she got pregnant with a cast on her leg. And I believe Auntie Phyllis is the one who told me that, which was hilarious. But needless to say, Auntie Phyllis has known me. In the mother's the belly. Yeah. Like she said, when I was in my mother's belly, she she was there when my mother was going through a very tough pregnancy. And she used to say, Phyllis, oh God, the wall is closing in on me, Phyllis. I ready. I ready. She said, just a little bit more. You have to keep it in there a little bit more, Pearl. You can't have her now. She's not ready. <laughs> That's how long I've known her. So we celebrate our elders and um, we celebrate all of you who are here today and all of the people that are special and near and dear to you because they matter. Had it not been for them, you would not be here and you wouldn't be who you are. So we, well, thank we you for that. appreciate all of you dearly. And we're going to pray ourselves out and we're going to have an amazing week mm -hmm. because early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> got something. We got a third day to celebrate. All right. Yeah. Come this Sunday because he is no longer in the tomb. He's no longer in the grave. Oh. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Can you pray us out? Crystal, you want to pray us out? Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Father God, we thank you for this time of fellowship together to honor you, to read your word and study and show ourselves approved, Father God. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving um, with us tonight, Father God, that you would give them comfort mm. and peace and, and memories, Father God, good mm. memories. Father God, shower them with happiness and joy and good memories of their loved ones and just the comfort in knowing that you love us most, Father God. Mm -hmm. So their loved ones have just returned home to the safety and warmth of you, Father God. Lord, uh, I just pray over every household mm -hmm. on this call, Father God. You know their private prayers, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what you brought them here to, to receive, Father God. Let your word marinate in their souls and in their hearts, Father God, so that mm -hmm. they can have greater courage, the courage of Joshua, Father God, to march in and claim mm -hmm. their rightful space. Oh, God. Claim their rightful space. Mm -hmm. We thank you, God. Yes, we God. thank you that you are with us. 
Mm -hmm. in this battle and we pray father god that no weapons formed against mm -hmm. us shall prosper yes, god. In, in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. happy resurrection sunday everybody. Yeah. resurrection sunday everybody happy birthday mom even though it's tomorrow oh, happy oh, birthday, oh, happy birthday mom. <laughs> yeah happy birthday <laughs> Happy birthday. Have a good Love night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.